Hi, John. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. I don't see your picture. Where's your face? My face is uh, not, not 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 public. I don't look pretty. No. Okay. <laughs> How are you? How are you? Good. Good. So they uh, they brought the bench up for me, and uh, yes. I'm going to start working on it maybe Sunday. Okay, that sounds good. All right, and I uh, I taped up the window. I saw that. I was there today. And I uh, planted all the bulbs that were in the back. Okay, good. So, good. Thank you. And Thanks. Mike said he would give me a hand with the uh, posts when uh, when we're ready. Also, I have the bill for that. I'm going to uh, leave it leave it in the blue bin outside town hall. Okay, great. Okay, Mike yeah, gave me the bill, so I'll do that. Yeah. yeah. Good. Yeah, just put park and rec on it, throw it in there, and, and someone will bring it in and put it in my mailbox. I yeah, know he has it all marked out. Yeah, we're all set to go. Okay, good. Thank you. You did. Yeah, it's just disheartening when uh, I was I kept on ranting and raving on on email, but. Um, <laughs> it's just the heartening. I mean, I thought I had it pretty heavy. Yeah. But they, they must have had like four or five people listening. Oh, they had to have, they had to have many. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you didn't leave the bag of garbage up at Emory, did you? Yes, I did. Over there by the, uh, the recycling okay. mirror. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that was for the, if they, if you opened it up, you would see it was just pot covers. That's all it was. Oh, okay. That's fine. I wasn't sure when I was there today, so I didn't want to go poking around in it. So, okay. No, those guys, did they ever cut the grass today? Um, I, I just talked to Megan Leach, who was up there this afternoon, and it sounded like they were up there. They weren't, they hadn't this morning. It was quite high, but they're, they're on a reduced schedule. So again, they, but they have been mowing. Are, are you kidding me? Are they on a reduced schedule again? Uh, well, I don't know. I don't know if that's changed. So, okay. um, but anyway, but they have been mowing. So. Yeah, they didn't. Yeah, they didn't do a really good job as Johnny would do for a Commons Park, but I guess it'll have to survive. So, oh well, I miss Johnny. <laughs> we all miss Johnny. I but I call him periodically just to say hello. Yeah, he stops by the store all the time, and uh, he uh, he's always criticizing their work. So, <laughs> yeah, he, he that's a problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, there's some, you know, they didn't, some areas they didn't cut the grass, others they did, so it's no big deal. No big deal. What are the subjects for tonight? I forgot, I didn't write them down. Sure, so it's um, restart of fee programs, Camp Kent, Emory Park swimming area, summer concert series, park pass sales. Okay. Where is everybody else? Aren't they on the line yet? Um, this is just like an in-person meeting. You're there first and we wait for everybody else. Oh, man. They haven't learned anything yet? Jesus. Well, it's good to talk to you guys. I haven't talked to you in about a couple of months. Yes, it's good to hear your voice. Hi, Lynn. Yeah, yeah I just... Uh, Hi. It's been crazy. It's been totally crazy. It doesn't seem to be letting up. And now we're going to go into a point where uh, vegetables are going to be scarce. They don't have anybody to pick it. Oh, um, yes. The illegal aliens don't want to come across the border. I can't blame them. Should be careful. You're being recorded. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh who's there? Yeah. Okay. I saw your sign up there the other day. Yes, he's been doing some uh, things for me. Yeah, I've been was going to talk to him, but he ran away in the car. <laughs> <laughs> took off like a bat out of hell. <laughs> no. well. Who's all invited to this meeting? It's a public meeting, so anybody could come. Okay. Oh, sounds like a couple of dogs that want to join in. <laughs> Friends just pulled in with a dog in the car and Duke's inside barking. Oh. I thought video on. It keeps going off. What am I doing? You take your finger off it. I did. Okay, there it's staying on. Let you look at the beautiful trees. 
e I text message and I called Abigail per her request, but I have not gotten any response to either. There she is. Hi, Blythe. Hi, guys. I like your shirt. <laughs> Me? Yeah. Oh, thank you. You're the only one, other one whose shirt I can see. Oh, that's right. Leslie's got a K, right? Right. No, it looks nice. It looks nice and cool for today. I might have to go inside. It's not all that quiet out here. Between dogs barking, motorcycles, and people peeling out across the river. Have you guys seen the river? It is so incredibly yeah. low. Yeah, it's dropped three feet. Yeah. It's more than that. I've been here 30 years. I've never seen it that low. Wow. Really? So it's usually like my dock is floating normally. Right. Right now, the water is 30 feet away from my dock. Wow. <gasps> wow. What, what, did they give a reason as to why? We haven't heard anything. I might call. We have a friend there. I could see if Chris still has his number but um we're thinking that the small dam that some of the boards broke so maybe they lowered it to repair the boards oh maybe still wow well at I least have... <laughs> maybe there'd be some indian artifacts we could find as we go along Ooh, that'll be fun gotta look at the positive side <laughs> yeah i actually contacted a friend today that goes over there a lot and asked him if he was going to go over and look for arrowheads and stuff. They say that area is full of them. Yep. There's a stone wall almost directly across from my house. I can't really see it, but um, that was part of an old Indian homestead. Oh, really? Nice. Yeah. We still need one more person, right? Yep. No, you have four. You do? Mike's here. Hey, how's it going? Okay. And Kevin's here. All right, so we can call this meeting to order at 6.02. Um, there's no alternates, right? Nope. No, I expect Trisha, but she's not here, so we can always elevate her if she shows. Okay. Um, so the restart of the fee program. So we are allowed to do outdoor training. No more than 25 participants must social distance five feet. I have been in touch with our Tai Chi and our martial arts and Lee Sol had asked about dog obedience. So mm -hmm. Um, tai Chi, Chris is very interested in starting, thinks he can do his class outside, um, probably start in July. He'll get back to me with a proposal. Um, Lee and I didn't talk about a specific date, but I think after she gets done with school, she usually does that at um, Kent Common. Um, martial arts, she was a little more hesitant about how that might look outside, but um, she was going to do some more to see what her other towns were doing and to see what um, Master Wilkie um, wanted to do. So I just want to make you aware of that and get your blessing that um, we could start offering those things. I, you have my blessing everything what about before i <clears throat> good night what are we gonna do with the pool then um we, we're, we're going one thing at a time on the agenda <laughs> okay all right lynn trisha is here so do you want to elevate her sure um we'll back up on the agenda for a moment can i have a motion to elevate the alternate yeah so so moved second please second all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Um, all right. So back to the fee program. Um, 
I say if they can do it, please do. Yeah, okay. I agree. It looked like it could be safe, so. Yeah, okay. So that I'll take that as consensus and then um, I'll keep you informed as they develop what they're going to do. Okay, hey. that's fine with me. All right, um, on to Camp Kent. All right, so I sent you the memo from the Office of Early Childhood that outlines all of the requirements that must be met in order to have a summer camp program. So one of my questions would be, um, we're allowed to have groups of 25 or more for the fee program, but only 10 for the camp? That is correct. You can only have a group of 10 and you're, if you had more than one group of 10, there can be no interaction between them. Um, would, would we be able to set up a tent if we get a, an outcry for like another group? You, I don't, I don't think you could be safe under a tent in event of inclement weather. And our, okay. bu our building also does not allow for social distancing for a group of 10 plus staff, don't forget staff, in yeah. the event of inclement weather. Right. Also, um, for those who are overly familiar with Emory Park, we do not have running water. Yes, you could use hand sanitizer but that's something to be aware of. Um, we could get one of the additional sinks with the porta potty. Yes, you could, and then someone is going to have to clean the porta potty multiple times a day. Well, it's a separate unit, right? Don't we have a porta potty anyway? Yeah, but you've got to, I know that you have to do a, you know, a fair number of um, kind of intermediate wipe downs of all bathrooms, you know, just throughout the day, there's going to need to be yeah. somebody who's wor who's working on that. And certainly, you know, we like we were looking at the um, requirements for bathrooms for when we reopen. And, you know, they're talking about how you have to wipe down sinks and faucets and handles and doors and all this stuff between every use of a sink. Um, is it really, I mean, is there, is there so much to be considered here that it is worth running a camp for 10 kids or what are people thinking? I think the rules are really stupid, especially since the CDC came out and said it doesn't spread that way. And we have not updated our, uh, our state has not updated the protocols. But are we, sorry, are, are we expecting any more updates? from the governor as to such things as the camps, summer camps? That, is, that, that just came out this week, didn't it, Leslie? That, that the, yeah, the latest that came out was just an increase in number. I don't think these requirements are gonna change. Um, you also are required to take the children's temperatures before they even get out of the car. Or the parents <laughs> can take them. Yes. We could have a sheet that just, um, when the parents sign them in, it just, has a thing that says temperature taken before entrance and they can just check that off. And then it's the parent's responsibility and we don't even have to worry about it. Well, we, we would have to verify that that temperature fell within the guidelines yeah. or the requirements. Sorry. I think I read that, that, that the parents can do it. That there's not, I didn't re read that we have to confirm that with our own temperature reading. Otherwise that wouldn't, makes sense. You would definitely want to have something, if you're going to even think about doing it that way, you would have to have something with the parents in writing, which would be a kind of a um, statement of compliance with, with rules and that they understand that they are, they have um, expectations around safety protocols as do their students. And they would have to at least, you know, probably sign off on something that says that they, they're aware of the risks of sending their kids into a group of even 10. And, you know, we certainly can't promise that nothing is going to happen, that your kid isn't going to um, be exposed to somebody who's been exposed. And, 
you know, you would probably want to put in there if you're going to ask the parents to be the ones who are recording the temperatures that there has to be specific, like, I know it's completely insane. Believe me, I'm dealing with all these crazy things just for opening of, of school. But what the lawyers are really recommending um, just for best practices, but also for liability concerns is making sure that you get parents to sign off on all kinds of things that say, I've read the CDC guidelines. I understand what my specific responsibilities are. I will be honest in reporting my kids' temperature. I won't bring them to camp if they're not feeling well. Like all these things we would have to make sure we were putting on a something that we had signed by all the families. I think that would be the least to start. There, for that. there is a, there is a inf, uh, con, consent form, informed consent that t explains the, uh, the risk for COVID that they do have to sign. And yes, Lynn, the parent can take the temperature, but the temperature can't be greater than 100 degrees. So we would have to know that that is in fact what's going on. Mm -hmm. Can I say yep. something? Hi. The is here. This is Megan Leach. She's a counselor. Hi, Megan. Hi. Hi. Um, personally, as one of the counselors, um, I would feel a lot better if we if we did run the camp, if we were the ones taking the temperature, just because if a parent, you know, had work that day, there's that chance that they might just say, oh yeah, my kid's temperature's fine. They may not have taken the temperature. They may have taken it and it's higher. And I would just feel terrible if another kid or another person got sick because of a different parent's negligence because when the kids do come to the camp, they are our responsibility. And I wanna make sure, I would like to make sure that we know that they are safe to be coming. Can I ask you a question, Megan? Did you not Hello? hear that? Megan? Yes? Can I ask you a question? Oh, can you ask me a question? Yeah. Oh, yes, absolutely. How would you plan on keeping the kids six feet apart from each other? That is an excellent question. Um, that's kind of what we've been discussing and how that would even be possible. Um, because like we said, the, if there's inclement weather, there's really nowhere to put them that they would be six feet apart. Right. I mean, uh -huh. when it's normal camp it would be somewhat easier i don't I don't know what we would do with them but we could easily have them in the park six feet apart but if anything were to happen i don't know how we would keep them that's that's really where i keep coming back to is if you know before you start getting into all the nuts and bolts about the programmatic things if your facilities are not going to support a safe camp then we shouldn't even talk about it how are you going to have a camp without having kids interact with each other? I mean, that's all about camp. Camp programs are all about, you know, playing ball. Oh, does the ball have COVID on it? Well, you know, um, that's just one example. So I, I don't, I don't know if this is a good idea. Um, if I could chime in, it's Kevin, the camp director. Um, I, I, at this point in time, I, I kind of agree. I don't, I don't, you know, Emory Park in most summers is, is the most beautiful thing. And I think unfortunately for this COVID environment, it's, it's, it really works against us in a lot of ways. Um, biggest issue being that we don't have the sanitary facilities necessary to really run it. Um, the porta potty is a huge detriment. And the fact that you can't, you know, even if we were to put one of those porta potty sinks in, you know, it's just, it, it is, you know, hand sanitizer can only do so much. Um, and when you do read thoroughly through the, the Office of Early Childhood and the guidelines, there's, we're supposed to be, even if we had camp, we have to monitor them, you know, washing their hands, I mean, several, several times a day. Um, you know, I would worry about eating lunch and, and other things in, in that kind of an environment. It's um, not to mention that the building itself doesn't really lend itself to really clean it
I've run this camp for 11 summers. It's, it's, it's a wonderful thing, but you know, in this environment right now, it is, unfortunately, Emory Park is not, you know, our facility just doesn't, I don't think is going to really allow for a safe environment unless we were to really, really dramatically alter the course of the camp. And I, it, like you said, I don't know if it's really worth doing it. if That's what you have to do And would that from, from that standpoint. How about, uh, it's John here. Can I just chime in for a second? So, so if we're not able to do Emory Park, have we, can we get in touch with Club Getaway, Leslie? Um, we can. I don't know. I, I don't know what they're doing or what that would be. I can tell you the school is not available because I did check on that. They have, okay. a, con they have a construction project and they have, um, they're hopefully having summer school. I saw I saw Club Getaway was advertising for uh, people to come to the camp. Is that camp, John? Uh, yeah, they, they make them up. They have different sessions for different things. So yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe that's a good alternative. Um, do we have people signed up already for the camp? We have, we have not done any signups because we don't know what our status is. So, so you, have, you you didn't even get any interest. Like, when are we gonna? I've had through about four or five either emails or phone calls in the last probably week or so just have, you know, do we know what's going on? Yeah. Um, but, you know, keep in mind, it's 10 children. That's all we can take. They can't share. They can't share anything. So, um, you know, arts and crafts projects have to be, everybody would have to have their own stuff. Okay. You know. and, and, and not forgetting to get out of the pool there. You have to put your hands on that railing. Okay. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, stainless that, steel. That, that's a whole that other. Has, that's a whole other conversation. That has to be sounded. I, I here's my suggestion. <laughs> I think uh, we table this for now, and maybe we we talk to somebody from Club Getaway. Yeah, that's a good idea, John. To see if they'll take it on. Yeah. And this it's way, we don't have to worry about a limit. Yeah. You still would have a limit because you can only have a group of 10. You might be able to have a second group of 10, but then you have the staff for that. Yeah, they probably would have a group of a second group of 10, um, the way they operate over there. But I think we should just table it for now and just ask uh, Club Getaway mm -hmm. if they would be willing to take it on. And if they're not willing to take it on, what do we do? I just, I just cancel it. I mean, it's not safe. It's basically well, I, I just, how many kids usually are at, who do the camp every summer? What's the average? We take 24 in a week. Um, you know, I mean, the, and are they separate? Are there, what are the ages? We take uh, going into first grade to going into eighth grade and they, they act as a, they pretty much do everything together all day. Is it worth looking at, you know, they're, uh, I'll throw it out there, the schools. Kent School, Marblewood, South Kent, and Marblewood doesn't have a pool, but um, they certainly have facilities and lots and lots of land and classrooms and dining halls and those kinds of things that might lend themselves to um, being able to run two separate groups. Maybe there's a group from first to third grade and a fourth to eighth or something like that. And you divide them into two groups of 10 and have them simultaneously on different parts of an 80 acre campus. Um, I mean, club getaway is, is an option, but um, beyond that, and I would probably go there first since they do have the swimming, um, you know, the, the, the pond and everything like that. But, you know, maybe there are other places to look at that aren't, um, that aren't doing stuff this summer that could help out that are in town. I'd be more than happy to contact each of the schools and, and you know, ask um, if they have space, if they'd be able to accommodate us. Okay, Club Getaway was a partner with us for a while. Um, I'm sure if we reached out to them first. Yeah, I would go there first, but you know, keeping the, before you trash the entire idea it would be nice to see if we could exhaust the possibilities that might exist just right in the town i know how much it's you know how important it is for you know certainly kids to be doing stuff for the summer but certainly also for the parents to have the kids with something to do for the summer so 
Um, I mean, I'm, there's a lot of, there are a lot of hoops to jump through. You would probably want somebody, not just a counselor to be some sort of a compliance person who helps to make all the, to do all the planning. That's, there's a lot to be considered, but before we throw out the baby with the bathwater, we should at least figure out if we can find different bathwater. Yep. I agree. Agree. So I will do that research and then What did you want to say, Mike? All good. Do we need to take a vote on that, Lynn? Did the take the take the take the take the I'm having some I'm having some audio problems. Audio problems. Okay. Okay. Uh, do we need to make a take a make a motion if we're just going to table it? Yeah. No, that's no. more information. I don't. I don't think there's anything to vote on. We have. We have, we're going to research other information, you know, stuff, and then and then come back and make a decision. Right. All right. Any more on Camp Kent? We're good. We'll move on to Emory Park swimming area. So regarding the swimming area, right now we have one lifeguard. The Red Cross at this time is not offering the lifeguard training class, uncertain as to when that might change. Um, you do have to maintain social distance on the beach, in and out of the water. Um, in a meeting that we had with the Creation directors in Torrington Area Health, they recommended a verbal screening of everybody that comes into your facility. How are you feeling today? You know, things like that. Um, so I don't know what you want to do about opening the swimming area. I would say table it for now. Um, I don't know if we can use that water from the second pond or not. Would we have to draw a draft from uh, one of these tankers? The water quality in the other pond is not going to be as good as it used to be. Because of? The beavers. Okay, that's what, that's what I'm asking. Yeah. And we would have to get a tanker in to really fill up the pond, uh, the pool. Yeah, but, and then even if you did that, John, because of the way it's set up, that water will circulate back out of there. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So what's going on with the beavers then? What are we going to do with that? So the commission had voted to leave them. Um, uh, they're, they're depending on what camp and what train of thought, you know, there is or isn't the potential for Girardia in the water. Uh, there's another reason why we should go. Go ahead, Mike. Go ahead, Mike. I'm sorry. No, I, I did check out the, um, the beavers, but I guess I, I didn't, I don't know enough to see how you know, as Leslie brought up, what that would affect. So I know we did last meeting kind of, we were generally anti-trapping because of the fact that it meant the beavers would die. Um, but uh, obviously you don't want to risk the safety of kids, but if there's not gonna be a camp, then maybe we can wait. But there's still gonna be a swimming area that everybody could be using and that's not healthy. Mm. So, well, there's another reason for why we shouldn't use uh, Emory Park at this time. Yeah, I mean, just opening it as a swimming area certainly presents its own set of yeah. conditions um, and issues and hoops to jump through. Um, I mean, not to, not to save the beavers, but it, it is kind of a weird circle of topics there that um, we certainly don't want people, if people are using it, we don't want the possibility that there's, that we've opened up a, um, under our auspices, a, a swimming location where people could get sick. Um, and 
So then that's an argument for getting rid of the beaver. But then if we're not opening it, uh, because there's too much to be concerned about in terms of safety and social distancing and how do you monitor that? Do you ask lifeguards to tell people that they're too, standing too close to each other um, or whatever else? It's a host of things to think about. Then suddenly the beaver staying is not that big of a deal. It's kind of a weird cyclical argument. Well, the beaver is a big deal because the beaver will populate. They're not going to just stay two beavers for sure. You know, next year you'll have six beavers or whatever, and then it gets to be more expensive to get rid of them. That's true. And how many lifeguards, Leslie? Can I ask you a question? Absolutely. Uh, how many lifeguards do we need by state law to be there? Um, we operated last year with two. Okay. Um, but I have one. We, we have one. Sorry. Okay. The other thing too, is like, I don't want to keep Tommy waiting forever. You know, we need to let him know. Well, if he doesn't do lifeguarding, I've got extra work for him. <laughs> 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 but seriously, I mean, there's so many negatives right now. I, I, I think if we explore cl club getaway, I think that would be our best option or any of the other uh, schools in town. But right now, um, it doesn't look like it's, there's so many negative things about Emory Park right now. Would Club Getaway be able to host the general public uh, for Kent residents, as well as the camp? I have, have, that's I have, something we could ask. Yeah, Trisha, I'm not sure what their plan is, what they are or are not gonna do. I mean, like, sure. yeah. Sure. But, but I, you know, as long as we're asking, let's yep. ask for the moon. Absolutely, we can ask. Okay. So should we make it so that, oh yeah, we'll have to come back for another meeting, that's all. Okay. Um, if I could just chime in one more time, um, I would just encourage everyone to kind of not wait too long about the camp decision because, um, you know, between myself and, and my two count, I mean, we, if we don't do the camp, uh, these summer jobs, I have to tell you, they're filling up fast um, yep, places, uh, especially with the unemployment rate being what it is right now. So, um, you know, I don't, you know, I, I, you know, I understand tabling it, but we can't, my point is, I don't think we can really afford to table it too long. Um, I think a decision kind of has to be made one way or another, um, you know, probably within the next week or so. Um, you know, it's, just, just in, you know, in the event that you know we don't do it or we don't come up with an alternative type of plan, um, just so that the three of us have time to kind of secure our other other employment if we need to. Absolutely, that's. Yeah, I don't think it'll take that long, Kevin. Yeah, okay. that's very fair, Kevin. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And and let me just so the commission is aware, um, the camp staff and I have had many conversations about alternatives. Sorry, the motorcycles, um, including virtual program, um, the regional rec directors, um, just so you guys are aware in the other region one towns right now, Sharon is the only town that is considering having a camp program because they have the hospital and the skilled nursing facility in their community. And their board of selectmen is going to their board of finance to ask for an additional $30,000 to fund their program. Wow. Um, so not sure if that's going forward or not, but that is the only town right now that's looking. So we've also had conversations, the recre recreation directors about regionally, what kind of things could we do as quote unquote challenges or contests. Um, and we're meeting again on Monday. And just so you guys know, we do have, I mean, we do have some, you know, if, if it comes to the point where, you know, Leslie does research and uh, club getaway isn't available and these other facilities don't pan out, um, you know, we have been, you know, coming up with some well, ideas. We're having a hard time hearing you. Oh, I apologize. Can you hear me? Me. Yeah. Okay. Or I was. Yeah, you're all right. I'm okay? Okay. Uh, just to okay. finish up my thought. Uh, you know, we do have some alternatives. I know they're not ideal. They're far from ideal. Um, you know, we could do some things virtually. Um, 
we've explored the idea. We've kind of, play, you know, we played around with it a little bit. And, you know, if, you know, if after Leslie does this additional research, you know, it comes to, to that, that's certainly something we can present to you guys at that point. Um, if that's something that you, you know, an avenue that you want to explore as opposed to, you know, just scrapping the whole thing altogether. Um, you know, we can, we could certainly, we're willing, I think the point is that we're the three of us, myself, Justine and Megan are willing to work, mm -hmm. um, you know, work with you on doing something for the kids. Mm -hmm. um, even if it's not, you know, the most ideal circumstance. Well, thank That's you. Great. Any more in the swimming area or the camp? We'll move on to summer concert series. So on the summer concert series, I have been in contact with the bands. The bands are still interested and willing. Um, anticipating that the group size allowed by the state is going to go to 50 on June 20th. And then after that, it's expected to go to 100. So that opens up the potential to have the summer concert series outside. The question becomes how to manage that because we'd still have to social distance. Um, is that possible at town hall? In looking, so another option was would we just have the band come and play and we could live stream that? But another possibility that's come up, and I had a conversation just initially with Connie Manis from the Kent Land Trust, might Park and Rec be able to partner with the Land Trust and have a drive-in type of concert at the Land Trust field? So people would come in their cars and park, the band would play, you'd have to stay in your car, but that might be an option. There is electricity there. Probably the only thing we would have to think about is some kind of stage. We would have to stake out the uh, areas and where they go, correct? Yeah, you, you, yes, John, you would yeah. want to mark out the, yeah. um, you know, the parking spaces. Right. I think that's a great option as well. I, I, I like it a lot. <laughs> We could get some kind of a screen there. We could have kind of, you know, other rock and roll things going on on the screen as well. That would be fun, like a drive-in. I, um, I had a just casual conversation too with the first selectmen, um, the CERT team, which are the, tr the volunteer force that's been trained that that might be something that they would be able and willing to help us with. Well, we'd need parking help for sure. Absolutely, and that's something that, that um, they need to handle all that. You know, and there, I haven't staked it out, but there were, there would be a limit to how many cars, you know, could go in there. Uh, do we know the limit yet? I don't know because I haven't gone and staked it out, you know, really looked at it, but, um, okay. but I, I wanted to put that out there as an option. Nice option. Oh, our first concert is scheduled for July 2nd. So if that's something that we want to pursue, then we should decide about that so I can pursue that further, you know, get the logistics nailed down. Yeah, go ahead. I give you a go ahead. Yep. Yep. Okay. Who's playing the first concert? Uh, Heather Strids, the, was it? Albert okay, great, yeah. Yeah. Perfect. yeah. That's perfect. Yeah. And that's the full band this time, correct? That is what we talked about, yes. Yeah, okay. So could we have, it, would it be possible to have cars and people? If there was somebody helping with social distancing? My, I think it's got to be one 
or the other maybe my concern my concern about the people are like the kids running all over everywhere and stuff That's yeah. True. yeah 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 so it's interesting and you know probably will be depends on what the weather is obviously that lot can get muddy and mucky so it have to be good weather yeah but um, and we couldn't have a rain uh, in um, in the community house. It, it, it would be canceled then, right? That is correct. The, the town town buildings are not open. Right. So would they get paid anyway if there was a rain day uh, canceled? Uh, they get half, I believe, depending on what time we cancel. Yeah. Okay. Well, let us know how many cars. Yeah, I'll have to get permission to go down there and kind of map that out and see what that looks like. We good there? Yep, I am. I think yeah. so. Yep. All right, park pass sales. So the tennis courts are opened. Um, so the question is, do you want me to start advertising that we are selling park passes for use of the tennis courts? Yeah, do we have a disclaimer for uh, COVID-19 distancing and stuff like that? So that informed consent that I shared with you, I'll make that part of the waiver that people have okay. to sign. I saw that, that looks good, yep. Are there, um do we have a responsibility to kind of have extra supplies out there um, or are we going to tell people to kind of bring their own stuff and um, I don't know I don't know I just wonder if you know like wipes or any of those types of things I don't know how much you touch a net when you're playing tennis but not too much but um you know, I don't know if there's a responsibility on our part to have additional equipment out there or additional um, sanitizing stuff. Well, if we do it there, would we have to do it at Emory Park, say? So well, I would think if we're going to open at, at all in Emory Park for swimming, we would certainly need to up. We would have to do it there, yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. And what about like your hand sanitizing station and all that? You have to do it there? Yeah. That's what I was thinking. I mean, tennis has been deemed allowable um, because it's, you know, I guess less um, potential for, if there's less contact there potential so um there was there was not any conversation about having to have hand sanitizer there yeah, as long as they sign the forms i'm good yeah anyone else have any comments I couldn't hear that. Is everybody else here? Yeah. Trish, you're out. Okay. You check your voicemail. Check your voice program. My voice your microphone. My voice is not. Can you hear me now? No. Hmm. You still have. There you go. You had your mic on, then you had it off. Uh. Okay, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to gather this camp information as quickly as I can, and then perhaps we'll have another special meeting um, next week instead of waiting until the 15th. Right. It's fine. Okay. All right. Anybody have anything else they need to? say about anything we've discussed previously that we're in the newspaper today did anybody see it 
before. No. For the vandalism at the park. So um. we'll have to, if we need to discuss that, it'll have to go on the next agenda. Yeah, I just want to. But yeah, we're famous. Um, all right, then we can call to adjourn the meeting at 6.39. Everyone have a great evening. Thank you. you too. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye, everybody.